two weeks, and then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at least there's some activity. Yeah. All right. Uh, top five questions for UNC here in the Final Four. We'll do UNC today, Duke tomorrow, Villanova on Wednesday, Kansas on Thursday, and then a... Is that your picks, one through four? No, no. Right? I'm just... Uh, Jack uh, told me which ones we were going to do in which order. He's... Wow. I mean, that's... that's uh, Armstrong and Emberger are here. They saw it. They said, this is what we're doing. Your order was... I sent them all... I sent him five this week, and he said this is the order. So, all right, number five, how will the game be called? So, everybody talks about how Duke gets all the calls. Well, we saw with Baylor how UNC came the closest to losing, blowing that game was the game got called really tight uh, in the second half. Baylor got a ton of foul call. I mean, they were calling fouls left and right on everybody, but if UNC gets into that bench, if the game is going to be called how most people think Duke games are called, it's going to be a problem for UNC. Because they only play those five guys, really. No, you're right. And it's one of the things as we entered that game, you're talking about Baylor and their depth. Hell, UNC has one or two guys themselves. You're exactly right. Yeah. And, and Craig, go ahead if you have anything on that. Um, I, I kind of had a thought now. It's it's leaving me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think people are going to be on the lookout for anything that goes Duke's way and uh, be ready to cry foul as soon as it does. You know, I think there's a little conspiracy theory going on. Like, oh, we just so happen to – and every everybody's a conspiracy theorist nowadays. Like, nothing's real and everything's this, you know, grand plan or some weird whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of people that – that feel like uh, Duke's the team of destiny, whether they really are or whether the officials will make that happen. So, yeah, I think there will be a lot of eyes on the refs. Yeah. Number four, can they continue this role without using the bench? I mean, will someone, if their game is called that way, can they, you know, not use their bench and hope for what happened against Baylor was, uh, you know, I think if Armando Baycott had gotten his fifth foul called in regulation, yeah. Oh, yeah. Baylor wins in regulation, it doesn't go to overtime. But Armando Baycott was able to stay in the game and be effective, even though his his missed free throws let Baylor get back in the game. Him being there in general was was huge for North Carolina to be able to win that game because if they don't have Manic and Baycott, Baylor can Baylor can get back. Well, I mean, Baycott last yesterday against St. Peter's was yeah. I mean literally like watching a, a men among boys and and uh, yeah, but and against Baylor he hit. You know, he we you and I he'd miss a free throw, make the second one on the two. But if it was one on one, he'd miss him yeah. right. He's a, he's a really good player. I always thought he might be a little soft, but no. I don't think so. I think he I think he's a pretty tough dude. I think that was I think it was probably an early season unfair uh, criticism of him. Number three, can Brady Manick stay as hot as he's been? Because if you look around the tournament, I don't know if there's a player that you can defend when they are going like Brady Manick because he's tall, he can hit threes like crazy, he can play in the low post, he can do pretty much everything. Nobody really has a defensive no. answer for him. No. You kind of have to hope that he's cold uh, in the game because he has been, especially since that Duke game, uh, pretty red smoking hot. Yeah, I hope he's cold or hope he gets ejected. That's basically the uh, the two options there, and uh, probably a better chance that he's ejected than, you know, than him, him cooling off. But no, he's been sensational and – uh, yeah, definitely, you know, gave it gave it to Baylor uh, in a major way before that ejection. But uh, what a pickup from Oklahoma. Uh, you know, so, but they certainly wish they would have had him this year, but uh, he's been great for the Heels. Yeah. Uh, two, who from the bench can step up if need be? So if Duke gets the game called the way that Duke probably wants it called, who is it going to be on the North Carolina bench that steps up? Uh, Armstrong can probably – answer that question more than anyone but again that's a question that hubert davis doesn't really want to have to answer is who's going to be the sixth or seventh guy if they get into that situation against duke in the ultimate version of this rivalry game yeah i mean like you said it they don't have depth so uh the options are few and far between and uh, you just gotta hope that you stay out of foul trouble and don't let it get to that point because in a war of attrition yeah i'm taking duke all day long i mean mm -hmm. if they get into to where they're battling benches then that's going to be blue devil's uh, running away with it, in my opinion. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're just going to have to hope you get the most from your starting lineup and what little depth that you do have, but uh, just part of the deal. And uh, even more credit to UNC for not having a large roster and being able to kind of navigate all of this and find their way here. That's why, you know, some teams can use it as excuses, uh, you know, injuries when their season doesn't go the way that they want. Uh, and then there's those that just fight through it and fight through depth issues, and North Carolina's done a great job of that. Yeah. And number one, Will the rivalry cloud their emotions? Do you get so keyed up that it's Duke, that it's your number one rival, that you forget that maybe you maybe to take Duke off the chest and just focus on the Final Four? Yeah. I, I, you know, it, there's no way that when they 
pa- pounded Duke at Cameron Indoor that they thought they'd see him again. Maybe no, in the ACC not tournament. No, yeah, and not mean, in this situation. Yeah, no. I mean, who could have imagined this situation uh, coming up? Yeah. yeah, I don't think it'll – I mean, I think there's definitely going to be some, you know, heavy emotions involved. It's going to be impossible for there not to be. But uh, I think these are two teams who are well-traveled and have been in a lot of games like this, whether this current incarnation of players have, you know, played in games quite like this. I mean, they're both experienced. They both have pedigree, and, and they're both used to playing in games like this. So I anticipate maybe they kind of have to settle each other down a little bit maybe early on, but I think it's just going to be Duke North Carolina basketball at the end of the day. It's just there's a lot more riding on this one than there has been on some of the others i just saw this note the ncaa has informed 11 different uh, officials that they will be selected to work the 2022 final four at uh at in new orleans